What's going on everybody? At this point, you should be able to go ahead and power up your machine and check it out. Granted, there are accessories that you will need to install prior to actually using the machine. So we're gonna go ahead, get these accessories hooked up, peel the plastic, fire it up. Okay, so first off, something to be aware of with the Hydra machines. They do require or highly suggest having a 20 amp breaker. Even the plugs on the back of the machine come and they look like this. That is a 20 amp outlet plug. So you will either have to get an adapter or make sure you have 20 amp plugs. Um, it's highly recommended that you do have 20 amp plugs because all of the accessories are designed to plug into the back of the cabinet. So you need that extra power to be able to power all those things and keep power consistent without overheating the lines or tripping breakers. Let's start off by hooking up our inline duct fan. So obviously we have the fan, and if you look at the fan, it shows you the flow of air. So air is going to flow this way. So our machine needs to be on this side. We have two sets of duct. So you've got one to go in between the machine and the fan and duct, or the fan and ducting out. Um, keep in mind with an inline fan, you want it as far away from the machine or as far to the exhaust part of the run as possible because inline fans are best for pulling air, not pushing it. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll set up one ducting. And for me, I'm not gonna cut anything because my machine is in a temporary spot, but we're gonna go ahead, put one duct in, fan, and then duct out my garage. And I have three band clamps that came with this to make it happen. So let's go hook it up. All right, so there is our ducting. So band clamp here, band clamp here, and band clamp here. And then this end of the run will just go out the bottom of the garage for now um, while we are in a temporary position here. So here on the back of the machine, it is labeled for air pump and exhaust fan. So it has a special plug, plug that is on the exhaust fan. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put that there. All right, up next is our air pump. So obviously this is the stock way of running the machine. Uh, eventually I will have a video on adding a compressor setup with an air assist. So this is going to be your air. So it comes with this line that then goes down to the tubing that connects to the machine. So this gets connected here. Me, I'm gonna use some Teflon tape just to make sure that seal is tight. You don't have to, but I'm going to. So I'll get that connected and then we'll go to the back of the machine and show you how to get it hooked up. So the air assist pump goes on this side of the machine, at least that's where it connects. Um, so it's actually right here and I'll bring you in close, but this is the line that connects there. And then our power connects over where our air or our uh, exhaust pump is at or exhaust fan is at. All right, so right here you can see air assist. So we'll go ahead, we'll take our blue line and this is a push connect right here. So you just press it in and then you see you pull on it, it's not coming out. Um, the only way that you can get it out is if you press on the ring and then pull the tube at the same time. So it has to be pressed in, then pull out. So yep, put that in, and then we'll just connect the power. All right, now for the accessory that takes the most setup. Um, first, out of your toolbox, you wanna make sure that you get the power cord for this. This is the alarm cable, so that will connect from the back of the chiller and then to the laser. That helps tell it whether the chiller is running or not, or that there's some alarms. And the tubing, so that way you can actually connect the water lines from the chiller to the laser. What also comes with mine, um, and should come with yours, is this is a propylene glycol. So this helps to make sure that you don't get any freezing uh, in the winter. Granted, a 20% dilution from what I've looked at red is ideal and it protects you up to about negative five, negative 10. If you're seeing more than that, then you may want to come up with another solution or add additional propylene glycol or an RV antifreeze. Um, on a lot of my other machines, I use 100% RV antifreeze because it's already diluted. So you dilute this with water, so this takes just under two gallons total. So I'm going to use this full bottle 
and then fill up the rest with distilled water. So make sure distilled water is what you want. So let's go ahead and fill this up. We'll get it connected and then we'll go through some of the options as far as the chilling functions. All right, so we've topped off the chiller and we've now got it over here ready to hook up to the machine. So you'll see you have your inlet and outlet and your alarm output here. Um, you can see here that we are almost to the full mark and we will probably have to top this off once we actually run it through the machine because some of the liquid that is in here is going to end up in here so that way it can cool the tube. And so this will likely go down. But something to point out, uh, the machine has inlets and outlets, but it, you have to make sure that you're doing what you need to. So the outlet here is going to go to the inlet there, and the outlet there is gonna to go to the inlet here, continuing the flow of water. So. All right, so now we've got everything hooked up. We've got our water lines going there. We've got our alarm cable here to alarm cable there, and our power cable here to power connection there. So one thing that I'm going to do for the meantime, um, and a lot of it depends on how much push pressure is getting pushed out of here, you can add metal band clamps here, you can add, um, they're like little pressure clamps, uh, but right now for what I have on hand, I'm going to throw some zip ties on here just to add some extra pressure so that these lines are not wanting to come off with the additional pressure coming from the chiller. And there it is with some zip ties just to add some extra pressure there and zip ties there. All right, so now that we're ready to power up the machine, be aware that there are two sets of keys. These keys here are for all of your doors and panels. This key is your laser power key. So we're gonna go ahead, we put this guy here. You do need to make sure that your emergency stop is up and then you're going to turn on the machine. And that's it. It's gonna go ahead, it's going to tell us that it wants to home and run through a process here. And so it's going to turn the laser power on and then it's gonna move the head. So basically it's gonna home, it's go boop, boop, and then it's gonna home the machine. So we're just gonna say confirm and then it's just doing its thing back there. And it's done. So now we're able to move the head around left to right on the X and front to back on the Y. And then you also have your Z that moves the bed down and up. So it looks like all of our axes are working so far. So let's jump back over to our chiller and let's talk about setting that up correctly. Now that the chiller is on and running, you can see that it's actually trying to cool. So we've got our lines here. I don't see any leaks. No leaks there, and you can actually see there's a yellow hue to the inside of the tube now. So that is coming from that propylene glycol uh, distilled water mixture. Um, but everything looks good. So I don't see any breaks or anything that's leaking. Um, really, you should just see water or like that mixture in the inner core there. So there's, there's like three tubes. So there's this outer, there's an inner one that fills with the water and then the middle that actually goes and shoots the laser beam through it. So you should see like kind of that inner sleeve here, that all full of whatever color liquid. If you're doing just distilled water, it's gonna be hard to see, but you might be able to see some of the little bubbles. But really, all those bubbles should flow out. Um, I've got some bubbles here. They're not gonna make a huge difference, um, but just let the chiller run for a while and it will start to clear out those bubbles. So as you can see now, um, I was up here for my fluid and now it has dropped. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some more in here just to get it more towards the full and we'll call it good. So for your water chillers, there are two different modes. There is intelligent mode and then there is constant cool mode. So if you are in a space that is air conditioned or live in a cooler environment where the, the air around you is in a normal temperature, say, and you're like, mid 70 degrees um, or lower, then you should be fine to just leave it in intelligent mode. 
in my space where I'm in an un, um, uncooled garage or you know there's no AC, no HVAC here in my garage, I wanna put mine in constant temp mode. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get into the controller settings and we're gonna make some changes. So, I so here in these settings, you'll see that F3 is where we're going to actually go in and change from intelligent mode over to our constant temp mode. And then in F0 is where we actually change the temperature that we want to set our chiller at. So that way it's cooling down to that temperature. I'm going to set mine to around 18 degrees. And then there is already a setting inside the chiller that uh, varies about uh, three to five degrees up or below that number. So let's jump in and let's make that change. So we're gonna go ahead and hold the up arrow and then the set button. So these are four different buttons here. They kind of toggle side to side, but we need to hold the up arrow and then press set. Hold those until it goes to zero. And then for mine, the password is zero eight. And we're gonna hit set. Then we're into our F numbers. So we're gonna go and we're gonna go up to get to F3 and say set. And mine, I've already changed it, but yours will probably come in and you will see 01, that's intelligent mode. So we're gonna change to zero and hit set. And then we're gonna go down to F0 and hit set. And I wanna set mine to Let's go to 18 and then I'm going to hit set and then reset. So that should save everything and I'll even go in just to double check it, make sure that it stayed there. So eight and let's go to our F3. So that looks good. And then we're going to go down to our F1 or F0 set and that's still set. So we're gonna set, reset, so we should be good now. And I can hear the unit is now chilling. All right, so with that, I can see that our chiller is chilling the way that I want it to. It's gonna be right around 18 degrees Celsius. Um, so we're set up. We're, we're ready to move on and into actually using the machine, getting into the controller. Um, but as far as accessories go, one thing that I do wanna cover before we wrap this video up is inside of the controller, there is an intelligent setting that is controlling both the air pump and the exhaust fan. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go to this menu button and then these external devices. So right here in external devices, there is this intelligent mode. So it gives you a bunch of different parameters here as far as what it's going to do with those different things. So me personally, I want 100% all the time. So if you go ahead and you turn intelligent mode off, I can already hear that the air pump turned on and the exhaust fan is starting to wind up. So if you're wanting 100% all the time, turn this intelligent mode off. Otherwise, it's going to operate according to these settings here. So air pump delay, you know, exhaust fan end delay, you know, air pump and exhaust fan start delay. So there's a, a couple of different settings that you can adjust here. So that way when your job starts, this is what happens. This is the kind of delay that happens and um, also the, the exhaust or like shut off delay. So end delay, start delay. Really, I want everything to be like on, ready to go pretty much all the time. Um, so I'm going to personally turn it off. And now the moment you guys have all been waiting for. All right, so now we've got all of our accessories hooked up, functioning properly, and we've powered on the machine. We can see that the controller's coming on and all of our axes are moving in the right directions. Left, right, back, front, up and down on X, Y, and Z. So up next, we're actually gonna go do an overview of the controller and do some alignment testing so that way we know we're ready to run into our first project. I hope that this video was helpful for you and that you will like subscribe and we will see you on the next one.